Hey CrossGates, it's time for our midweek update and I'm excited to just generally see the evidence of the life of the church returning to what it used to be, or maybe I should just say I'm happy to see the life of the church moving forward in, into what it can be. Um, in the background, I can hear Meryl practicing her handbells and this morning, the children from the child care center were walking over for um, a um, graduation um, service uh, for themselves. And uh, I thought about walking in there just real quietly and, and taking some, some pictures just to remind us that even as life seemed hidden over the last year, the life of the church and the life of children and the life of families has continued. And so um, if you'll hold on just a second... Um, I'll walk into the uh, into the sanctuary and, and catch some shots in there. I'll be right back. So here we are. I'm going to sneak into the sanctuary and try not to draw too much attention to me as they're getting started, but I just wanted you all to see this. We got kids in here. It's always good to see children in the church and it's good to see our childcare ministry um, from across the parking lot coming on over here and re-engaging. So y'all take joy in this. Take joy in the children and in the teachers because what God begins, God finishes. So let me move back to my office. Well, that took longer than expected, to be honest with you. The children saw me, and uh, I don't know, it's rather humbling when you walk into your own uh, sanctuary and they say, who are you and what are you doing here? <laughs> and what do you do here? So uh, um, Faith joked at me and said, Jesus said um, that we should come to him as children. And uh, I said, does that include all the crazy questions? And then we looked at each other and said, yeah, that's pretty much all we ask. But uh, the joy of the life of the church, um, what God's beginning and what God's concluding, it's a, it's a beautiful sign. Um, and as I was walking back, I, I guess I'll just make this as an announcement. Uh, I saw that, um, or was reminded that, that our Boy Scout troop, uh, Troop 229, is going to be doing a car wash fundraiser on May the 8th from 9 until noon. We'll be announcing this. Um, additionally, as it, as it comes forward, and you'll see some updates from um, Cindy um, regarding, you know, what's going on and how do we revive the life of our troop here. A um, lot, lot of opportunity for us as a church. Um, the other thing I want to remind us of is that we do have a work day across the street where these children uh, have come from um, this Saturday um, from 8.30 to 11.30 um, here um, just come, have some jeans and gloves, and sometimes it's just raking pine straw, and other times it's using a pressure washer. But uh, it's all important ministry work that we do to prepare our spaces and places um, for the ministry that God's doing. Um, just to conclude our time this morning, remember that what God begins, God finishes. And we know that in the New Testament, we hear Paul say that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. But you know, there's also a psalm, and um, y'all have heard me talk about this before, but Psalm 22 begins with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we often take that psalm and place it into Jesus's mouth there on the cross, and we think that the only thing that Jesus is saying there is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Almost as if we, we think that um, in that moment, yes, a moment of despair, yes, a moment of, of, of great pain and anguish, that Jesus is not saying that he trusts his Father. In reality, Jesus does. Because Psalm 22, if you read it from the beginning until the end, as I believe Jesus was asking us to do in that moment, was he was saying, y'all, remember Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But keep reading. 
Well, the psalm for this week is the conclusion of that psalm, Psalm 22, 25 through 31. I want to read it because it's where we are as a church, it's where we are as a people of God, and it's where Jesus was as a reminder of this. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Crossgates, may we never forget that we're in the middle of this story, that we are these generations that in the past people have told us about, future generations will be told about, and it's our responsibility to tell people about the faithfulness of God. And for us to remember that the work of Jesus didn't, didn't really come to an abrupt end with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It included it. It was inaugurated by it. But it will end with, he has done it. So let's remain faithful. Let's abide in him. Let's abide in his love and stay faithful until the end. Crossgates, I see Christ in you.